Y'all ready? Y'all ready out there? Okay. All right. This is very interesting how this came down, so I hope to share it with you as it was given. Um, you know, as metaphysical Christians, we really are looking at how to foundationally, this year in particular, um, begin to live the Christ of consciousness, actually live it, not just pray, get out in our world, be ourselves like we've always been, and then pray again, but to actually pray and go be different, <laughs> be brighter, be lighter, be, be the light that we are, the Christ we are. So love at, love at the Core was the, the title they gave us. So when you think about love, you think about an energy, you think about um, it's a space that we live in. People have defined it so many ways. It's the gravity that pulls you back to one another. It's the strands of energy that bond you in connectedness. Um, it's joy, it's health, it's compassion, it's acceptance, it's truth. And it's all around us. We're in it. We're a part of it. You guys getting it? Okay. This is what they said. When I say they, I'm talking about spirit. There's this team of spiritual beings that work with me. It's not just like they, random, internet they. It's, it's spiritual beings of light. And, I tr the, and as you all know, I try to hear what has been prepared to share. So the team <laughs> said, <laughs> love is an energy of awareness. And I went, now that's interesting. Love is an energy of awareness. And so I wanted to uh, share, it's, it's almost like they're teaching me as I live my life this week. Um, I was busy, and then I stopped to send Reiki. Someone had gone on the Reiki strand. Uh, one of our members who has now crossed over was a friend of, of ours. I call him a friend of mine. I loved him a lot. And his brother is making transition right now, so they've taken him off of life support. So I stopped to send Reiki to his brother, and here was my friend, came in. And the light, the immense love, the unbelievable energy around him was overwhelming. I was like, oh my God. And he said to me, this is what he's coming to, don't worry about it, I got him. <laughs> he's fine. And I, and I just said, and then I finished my Reiki and I sent Reiki to his family too as well. But I was in that moment and I talked to this gentleman that was a friend of ours, a member of our church. I talked to him and I said, oh God, you're just so beautiful. You're so, it, the, the space is so rich and bright around you. And I just drank it in. I just drank it in. And I had the knowing that I am in that space too. I just don't take my awareness to it. And it was very clear in that moment. And then he laughed. And then I just kept saying, oh, God, keep me in that space. Let me know that I live in that beautiful space. And it was a heaven blissful consciousness, you see. So that was just a moment of me being taught where your focus is, is what you see. Love is all around us. And we can focus on this level of interaction or we can focus on the greater love. And it is as pure and as palatable as, as anything. It's measurable. So what we are calling love is an awareness of what already exists. We are just now seeing it. It already exists. But when we focus on it, we can call it love. God is love. We are love. God is love. We are love. We know that. But do you always feel like love? And can you always feel the love of God? Can you always feel that? And you know those moments when you feel God come and just touch you. There's like no distance. There's nothing that can explain it away. It's just this oneness. So this is what we're working on today. Um, I wanted to uh, give or use as our example, this is Life and Teachings Book One. Um, in my book, it's like around page 22, I think. And one of the masters is explaining to our group of explorers, as this happened in 1894, there was a group of, group of explorers that were in the, I believe it was the Himalayas, and they were, had met some masters, and they were trying to explain to them teleporting, how you can teleport your body, okay? But you, don't, don't, you can't be taking your body anywhere until you understand it, love it, and become an energy being. He took a piece of, he took a glass of water, 
and he showed them the molecules of the water. And then he focused on the one set of molecules in the center of the glass, and he started turning it into ice, just with his thoughts. And he said, do you see the ice? And they said, yeah, we see the ice. And he said, now watch the glass. And he simply held the focus on the molecules in the center, and then all of the glass began to turn to ice. And he said, that is what happens. When we focus on something in the center, everything around it starts to vibrate to it. He did not take his focus. This is what he was trying to tell them. He did not say ice, 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 ice to make it bigger. He said ice, and he held it, held the focus of ice, and then the molecules began to vibrate in harmony with that which had intention. Is everybody with me? It just became. And now as I was reading that uh, a couple of weeks, a month ago or so ago, um, pre-COVID, I was reading that, and um, I saw our bodies. I saw the core of us. We know we are divine, perfect beings at the core, do we not? What if we could just focus on that? Hold our vision there instead of trying to go ice, 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 ice. How many, how often do we, even when we're trying to manifest something, we go, okay, God, we got this. Mm, this is my desire. This is my desire. And then we focus, 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 trying to change everything around us to be the desire instead of letting it come to us, magnetize. Do you see the difference? If we are focusing on a desire so strongly, and I'm using desires and manifest because I know you guys do this all the time, but if you're focusing on a desire so strongly and you've got it in your central core, nothing comes into your field but that which harmonizes with that. Be it a positive desire or a negative desire. You wanna be mad at somebody, be mad at somebody. Everybody you meet, you get to be mad at. You know, it's true. Just you're going to vibrate to that energy. So we know it works and we understand it. Now we need to use it for our empowerment of self. Holding the focus of the central core, being aware of the central core of self. So he did not change, and the Spirit also said this, he changed the vibration of water to ice by holding the thought of ice, and it is a product, it's a byproduct of water, right? He didn't change the product. He did not change the substance, he changed its expression. So, he did not make water bread. He didn't change the substance, he changed its expression. So, keep our focus on that. Once he allowed the form to take on a different expression, the molecules around it began to be influenced. And they also became in harmony. They became eyes. Intention, as you know, is the key to the universe. Teacher taught me that a long time ago. Her teacher taught her a long time ago. Who knows who created that idea? Intention is the key to the universe. So molecules filled with intention draw like to themselves. They are more pow powerful than molecules random. We are love. Why don't we draw love? Why don't we draw love? We know we're love, right? We know we're love. So they, Spirit said this, number one, where's our focus? Are we recognizing the love in us? Are we recognizing the love in us? We've been talking about the Christ all month. Remember, we ta started in January talking about the Christ within, our inner guidance, and how to go within and really see the purity of who we are, and follow that, take actions, nurture it, and act upon it. And then last week, did anybody remember, we talked about the universal Christ all around us? I stand in the universal Christ. And when I stand in the universal Christ, where's my focus? On that infinite love of God all around me. And I, there's no more distance between me and the things I say. I am child of God. When I stand in the universal Christ and say I am child of God, it's one more powerful. So we've been shifting our focus to the deep within and then to the universal. So now we want to shift our focus just a little bit more. We see the love around us and we are ready. Now, we have to go back to our awareness. 
Love is an energy of awareness. When we feel it, we are sensing something that already exists. So is everybody ready to change? Does everybody understand the premise, the principle of everything that was said so far? Okay. So to change means we have to look at why it does not work the way we want it to. And that is because the love that we feel in the center flows through our human patterns because we were taught how to love. We define love as unconditional light and peace, but it flows through the patterns of our creation. So I will show you my patterns, and I think it's probably yours a little bit anyway. Everybody has to find love in our world. We don't, are not taught to be it. So little children are taught to find love. Children smile back at you, don't they? Children respond to you. Um, they, we're teaching them how to love us. Um, I was very surprised with my little Hazel, nine months old granddaughter. Um, every time I get her, since the time she was little, I grab her and I go, ah, 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 jump her up and down, act all crazy, laugh and smile, do all kinds of crazy things. And so, and so she'll do that and she'll laugh with me. This Sunday passed, I wasn't holding her, her mom was holding her, so I stood behind her and did the same thing, la, 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 and she started doing the same thing. I thought she was doing it because I was bouncing her. She's bouncing herself in her mommy's arms, matching me. I taught her to do that. I said, Hazel, if you love me, bounce around when I bounce at you. <laughs> She's going, Grandma, I love you. I'm going to bounce at you. See? Small little behavior. How deep does that go? As children, when we get older, we're taught to find love, and we find love the most easy way. Not Hazel. Hazel, you're perfect. But most children are taught to find love by giving away their power. And they do that by behaving for their parents and their teachers. Um, I really would like to do this, but mommy said I can't do this, so I have to give mommy my power. And that's okay. We call that learning protection and processing. But as we get older, when do we stop that? When do we ever learn to stop giving our power? When do we ever learn that loving is not about giving power? When you go into a relationship with a mate, what's the first thing that you do? You say to that mate, hey, what do you need from me? I give you power, and you know what else I give you, mate, my beloved partner? I give you the right to have an opinion of me. I give you the right to diminish me into nothingness. I give you the right to lift me up until I'm sailing with the stars. I give you that power over me, my beloved. Now give, it a, give me yours. <laughs> And then we proceed to dance in the stars with each other and to crush each other into nothing. Is that love? But we're taught as little children how to love, to find love, to find love. I was taught that way. I was taught that way. The other thing is how to sustain love. When we have relationships that we feel that love, how do we sustain it? My mother was a great, lo she loved everybody. My mom loved everybody. If she didn't love anybody, there was a problem because she loved everybody. I think there was one person in her whole life I felt she did not love dearly. And how she loved, how my mom loved, was to worry about them. And if she loved you, she worried about you. And when I am talking to you and I go, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? And I'm talking to you and I'm making that face at you, that face. You don't know, I carry you home with me. I'm sending you Reiki in prayer. I'm doing all I can to love you till I have set you down to God. It took me years to learn to give you to God. Do any of you show love by worry and concern, by caring other people? Is this love? Is, does it vibrate at love? Does it vibrate at joy? Does it vibrate at freedom? Does it vibrate at what already is? It is a pattern of our human behavior, an expectation that was given to us normally in our childhood by our caregivers, our teachers, or whoever. Normally we catch it when we're little, these patterns. And then we grow up and we think that is how love is expressed. 
if I'm going to make love my core and going to be able to create love in every fiber of my being, moving out into my world, moving, 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 changing vibration of life around me, can I live in those patterns of carrying people through worry or giving my power away or taking the power of another to prove I love them? It took me years to get out of Patrick's energy. It took me years to take power back away that I had given him and he had given me. We're mighty, mighty, mighty campers. We've been here 30 years together. We've been in relationship for 30 years. And we're metaphysical. We are metaphysical from the get-go. But still, the patterns were strong. And we had to, to say, okay, you know what, Patrick, you don't have the right to have an opinion of me. Yeah, that's simple. I don't have a right to have an opinion of you. You don't have a right to have an opinion of me. Did it end the relationship 30 years later? No. It changed it. Just changed it. Didn't end it. Because we were consciously learning to do things differently. And we consciously f sometimes flip back into being the pattern of our parents. So my mom worried. My father, how he brought love was he brought shelter and food into the house. Didn't talk too much. I, and I always knew my dad loved me because my mama told me so. I know that's not true of people today, but that was true of my world. Mom told me dad loved me, so therefore he did. But, and there was one year in our lives where he did not bring shelter into the house nor food, and I knew in my heart for a certain fact he did not love me. He had stopped loving me because he was no longer doing it the way he always had. My son can tell you, I brought, he, there was always food. I couldn't cook worth a lick, but there was always food. He never had to worry about us having transportation. He never had to worry about us having a roof over his head. He didn't worry about any of that because I learned how to provide love the way my dad did. And did I worry about my son? <laughs> oh, heck yeah. <laughs> heck yeah. All the time. Because that's how my mom told me to share love. The patterns are deep ingrained within us. And as metaphysical Christians, we need to have an alternative in order to shift them. We can be aware of them, but what do I do differently? I'm still going to do that, you know? This is the opportunity here to shift it, to, sh to change the pattern. It's funny to watch Patrick, Patrick's mom's pattern of love. And he was one of, what, eight children? He was six of eight children. So he was just lost in the pack, just pff, another kid coming in. <laughs> and he would tell you that he loved sneaking down the stairs when everybody was asleep so he could sit in his mom's lap and just have a private moment. And she'd bring him over, and he'd just sit there and just be with his mom. But how his mom showed love, other than those quiet, sneaking, stolen moments, was to cook. And when I first started dating Patrick, you know, I don't cook, I insulted him on so many occasions because I did not like what he made. And you just don't do that if that's how I'm showing you love. I made this for you because I love you. It's like, I don't like it. <laughs> what? <laughs> It was just this e extremely sensitive area. Of course, we were young. We were young back in the day. And he has learned that he does not have to share love that way as well. But uh, as I'm sharing our stories, are any clicking with you? Are any stories coming up in your mind about how you may have been taught? How you can are still following the picturing of, out of love and getting offended when people don't accept it and blah, blah, blah? OK. When you can find the pattern, now we can change it. We can change that beautiful pattern. When we shift our energy back to the central core, we all know we're children of God, right? We know we are children of God. Say, I know that. I know. All right. We know we were born of love. We know when we cross, we're going back to love, the higher understanding and wisdom, which we never really left in the first place. We know that. How do we take that pure essence of the love I am and begin to live it at our core? And that is rising above the patterns of our history. Sending the focus, sending our focus to what we want to become, see ice, not where we have been. We need to start focusing on ice. The the purity of the love I am, so that you can stand in the energy 
and feel the purity of the love I am just for a moment, then the love that begins to vibrate to you and through you will not be moving through the patterns. It'll be moving through that higher frequency. And if you're like me, there is a moment in time where you could be frustrated and not feel pure love. The next minute, five minutes later, feel the love of God pouring through you, pure love. Ten minutes later, not feel pure love. Do you see? We have the experiences of, of being in touch with it, and then we have the experiences of being challenged by the earth patterns. Our goal is to hold focus on the inner, on that light. And how we sustain it, how we sustain the pattern, is simply by taking moments to hold the focus. I am aware of the love of God for me. I am aware of the love of God for me. Last night we did our um, healing night, our Reiki night. I just want to share a little story. Um, we've been, Interquest is 30 years old. Uh, it was started uh, March 1990, incorporated in November of 1990. And um, I was on the Reiki table last night. I could really feel the love of God moving through me and being here. It was just a very special night. And I'm, I was on the Reiki table and Spirit showed me this picture. During the first 10 years, we were in Roswell, and we were small, and um, we rented, and then 20 years ago, we, brought, we purchased this place. Well, they showed me the first 10 years, and they showed me a woman named Nan, who was our music person. And they showed me Cheryl. Cheryl Province is a minister here. Most of you know her. And they showed me Patrick and I. And they showed me this love that was around the four of us. And Spirit said, do you see what you all created together? You created a space where pure love could be held. And then they said, Cindy, you always thought you were creating a big church where my message could be heard and you could champion me and teach me and blah, blah, you know, this human perception. Then God said, not one of you could have been a different person. Those four positions had to be filled by each one of you. You, were, I, you had to be there. You did it. Then when you came here, Bonnie was added to the foundation. And the five of us held the frequency so that God could do the work that needed to be done. And I was told, you did it for every single person that came through your church during those years. It wasn't to build. It was to be there, to create a space for those people that came. And the idea of this being the same, it, was, it just took this whole perception of love off of me because there was an energy in my heart that until I had accomplished something that I thought God wanted me to do, create a huge church that loved everybody, um, or huge meaning, you know, not, not mega, <laughs> peeps. <laughs> 500 me or less, you know, that's huge. <laughs> not mega. I w my sights weren't that high. But just an energy of love. And I always felt like I had not done that. And Spirit said, no, look at the love. The outer hasn't happened, no, but it wasn't about that. It was about the love. It was the most beautiful energy in the world to feel that I had been working in that love of God the whole time. I just couldn't see it. And it was beautiful to see it. Do you see? And we are all, and the fact that no one could have taken our place. And I, and I asked Spirit, I said, what about going forward? It's like, don't worry about it. <laughs> The people that need to come, the people's places will be taken. People that need to, to step forward will step forward. And it will be different, but it will be good. You see? So I share this with you because in a nanosecond, I could see my life's mission
accomplished me. Accomplished. So it was good. It was good. So whew, awareness and focus, awareness of love. Aware of the love, the thoughts, aware of your gift of the journey, and remember the bumblebee or the honeybee, whatever it is, they think that they're making honey. The bee thinks its purpose is to make honey, but its purpose is to pollinate, cross-pollinate, so we can have food. If it wasn't making honey, we would not have the food that it helps us create. So it's totally unaware of what its contribution to the whole is. It's just doing its job. And we are totally unaware of our contribution to the whole. But we can begin to understand and know that we are love. And no matter whether we could see it or not, our journey, even up into this moment, has been filled with love. Because we're children of God. But now we want to be conscious, don't we? We want to wake up. We want to be conscious to how to do this. So when we allow ourselves to go within and just focus on the vibration of love. Now we're going within to check our guidance, right? We're going within to check our guidance. Now we're going within today to add another texture to this. We're checking our guidance, and we're standing in the universal Christ. Two layers. This is our third. We're going to go in, and we're going to claim the core to vibrate at love so it can begin to move out into our world. Simple? And you'll recognize your human patterns. You will recognize them. And you can just love them and let them go. Just love them and let them go. Okay? Because you are a child of God. All right, let's go within. So put your feet on the floor. Father, Mother, God, we thank you for this moment in time. We thank you that we can now begin to walk at a higher realm. And I welcome the masters that work with us, the angels, guides, and teachers, and the masters that prepare all of these services and these concepts that they step forward now to hold a higher frequency for everyone here and who hears my voice. And I ask Jesus Christ to join and just lift the energy of the space. And I would invite each of you just to feel a beautiful light coming over you. We are safe in the heart of God. Let God's light guide you to your own heart. And you might begin to feel your heart expanding and warm. You might begin to sense a light vibrating of color and peace. Just feel it vibrating. Let your awareness go to that focus point. I am love. Begin to see vibration coming together in the most brilliant colors. Maybe pure white light, maybe different colors, but it is amazing. I am love. And just see the vibration of the colors. See them growing strong and without effort beginning to get larger and larger. I am love. Let your eyes stay on the central core. Feel the warmth of that core. You can feel it growing, but just stay on the central core. I am God's child, and I am love.
I accept myself. I am loved. Take a breath. Bring your focus back to your column of light. I stand in the universal Christ. And I am guided daily with every detail. My core is love. And Father, Mother, God, we thank you so. We thank all the masters. We thank you, Jesus Christ. And it is done. And breathe again. And let your focus come back to your body. And you can gently open your eyes. I did not have you focus on it for very long, did I? That wasn't long, was it? That's all you need. Go in to see the vibrating energy of who you are and see it may be a different color next time. Did anybody get colors? It may vibrate differently next time. But focus on the fact that the core is love. And then let it go. And that sets into motion what you need. As we do this for the next week, standing in the universal Christ, again following our guidance, should I do this, should I do that, checking in all the time, and focusing on the internal core, we will see changes in our world. The world is up to the world. Our world is up to us. Say yay, God. Yay, God. That's how it is. <laughs>